I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, I'm going to introduce you to a fascinating world, a world we probably know very little about, and we're going to do it by looking through the pages of a fascinating book. It's called Silk, Exploring Nature's Superfibers by Sean Blamires. He unravels the intricate world of silk, a natural marvel with a myriad of applications. This book explores the fascinating properties of different silks and their potential uses in science and technology. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Sean, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Logan. There, there is so much more to Silk than I ever realized. Um, and your book has opened up my eyes. I don't even think of spiders being involved at all, but yet they are. Um, so this all began with work on your doctorate. Is that how you decided to uh, explore the world of Silk? Tell us about that. Uh, yes. So uh, going into my doctorate, I was just keen on on doing uh, ecology, ecophysiology of animals. And there's a lot of spiders on the campus of the university uh, where I where I did my doctorate. That was the University of Sydney uh, in Australia. And um, so uh, one of the things I decided to do was um, look at the webs uh, at, because you, you see lots of webs out, and uh, I learned that that they're a good way to understand the behaviour and the physiology of spiders because it's what's called an extended phenotype. They uh, they express they express themselves what they're what they're doing and how they're foraging and all that through through the design of their webs. Um, so that sort of got me interested in looking what makes up a web, what's what, what's in it, how do they build it, what what do they spin, and it made me think about the silk. And then, um, and then I started realizing that there's they have specialized silks for specialized uh, uh, features, um, sticky silks, adhe uh, extensible silks, frame silks, all these different things, um, and that some of these silks have properties that that people are struggling and and haven't yet mimicked in the lab. So they're like the most high performing silks uh, on the planet. Uh, high performing high performance materials on the planet sorry so this amazed me and i kept reading about it and started doing more research specifically on silks now the silk we use in our clothing like on neckties things like that does that all come from spiders uh no what's uh, traditionally how silk is uh, uh generated is from uh, a moth uh, the larvae of a moth uh, the silkworm moth um so they produce um lots of silk so they wrap themselves up and they're very they're a domesticated animal they they don't live in the wild anymore they live in um big factories or, or so farms they're like or sweatshops Just, filled with moths yes <laughs> yes silk right? and, they, and they produce loads of cocoons and then the cocoons are boiled up uh so the, the larvae are removed and the cocoons are boiled up and the uh the, the silk extracted. The reason they're boiled is that the cocoons also have like this resin inside them that has to be removed from the from the fiber. And then the fiber's wound up and you get lots of lots and lots and lots of fiber from a, even a single cocoon. So if that's scaled up massively, you're getting lots of fibers. It's harder to do that with spider silk. Um, there's been thoughts of harnessing spiders in that way since the 18th century, but it's just been extremely difficult spiders don't farm like silk moths do uh, they tend to eat each other they take up a lot of space um, they tend to die a lot so there's a, a lot of reasons spiders are more difficult uh, but where the the efforts into creating spider silk fibers is now being directed to is genetic engineering uh, efforts um, and the reason why uh, spiders are, are, are still being thought of is the silks of the spiders are actually uh, the most high performing materials. Silk moss silks are very good. Spider silks are even better. Now, were there any surprising facts you found out when you were doing your research about silk producing animals? Um, well, as I've been through uh, my research from, from knowing nothing, 
to to getting more and more and more interested. Uh, yes, there's it seems a, almost an endless uh, answer one question, ten more pop up. So um, so this is where um, I've started uh, reading and getting interested in. Uh, more than just the biology, the, the the mechanical properties, the genetics of it, the protein chemistry, uh, and then the applied methodologies uh, around it. So that all involves relearning everything, learning these new disciplines, trying to understand how um, uh, how researchers in that field go go about it. Um, uh, when I do some research in in different fields like that, I have to learn to use different machines with different analytical techniques. So it's um. Doing uh, working on silks has been a constant learning. It's mm. uh, there's never a time when I feel I I know enough. There's there's more and more and more to be learned all the time. Amazing. I'd imagine at this point you're one of the world's most preeminent experts on silk. Um, but uh, I know you're a humble man, so you probably won't say yes to that. But I'm sure you know more than ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the public when it comes to silk. You mentioned that the silk that comes from spiders is more valuable, more unique than the silk that comes from moths. Uh, what makes this silk so valuable and what are its applications, the ones that come from spiders? Yeah, well, uh, both silk moths, both the moth and the spider silk uh, uh, are unique in that what they, they combine uh, two properties, uh, extensibility, so being able to be stretched like rubber, with high strength so being hard to hard to break mm -hmm. um and that's rare so usually a material is super strong super 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 extensible so combining the properties is 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 unique uh which gives them you know a, a whole bunch of new uh new um performances that that, that haven't been realized yet However, the spider silk is a degree, a very good degree, more tough. So the com combined properties of uh, of strength and um, extensibility above and beyond the the uh, silk moth silk. So for whatever reason, that they're even more high performing, and um, so that makes them even more interesting because there can be even more uh, high performances. Uh, gotten out of the silk if, if we can eventually make fibers like we do with silk moss with spiders uh there's even another um animal uh called a bagworm it makes a cocoon that's really big really heavy a really big moth larvae uh, it makes this massive cocoon and it sticks all debris in it like like twigs and, and bits of dirt and all sorts of things and it's thought that that has an even tougher silk so there's some investigations on about that yeah. Again, to the applications, why is it important to have a tougher silk? Is it used in some kind of military application that I'm not aware of? Or tell me about that. Yeah, well, potentially, the, yeah, because it's a brand new space for, for functional materials. So it opens up a whole bunch of new areas that, that materials just weren't possible to be made uh, of before. And probably one of the biggest, I think, is probably military materials. So um, armors and you know, um, uh, even even uh, the the baggage that you carry, helmets, everything can. If if you could infuse some silk like material into it, you can get the high performance at low weight, uh, and also breathable and all sorts of things. Whereas your Kevlar's and all that uh, don't offer you. It's it's cumbersome. It's heavy. It's it's hard to use. Um, that can also apply to sports uh, sports clothing. Protective so it's got breathable football properties. players and so on. Yes, yeah. yes, lightweight and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we're, um, I've got a collaborator interested in in weaving it into clothing. So um, the other thing that that's, that the spider silk can do is it can change property in uh, particular conditions. Uh, so it can shrink in water. It's um, it can become tougher in in dry conditions and and various things like this. And this could be used in a, in a particular way to create materials that, that vary in different environments so mm -hmm. in a human environment you can you can have your uh uh have your sweatshirt or whatever you wear and it opens up a, and becomes more porous in a colder environment it closes over various things like this they're a long way off being made but um people i know and 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 elsewhere are, are thinking about these types of things now amazing amazing and i guess you've already kind of addressed the dragline silk uh, the spider dragline silk 
um, is mm. the most valuable, really, because that is the lightest and the strongest, right? Yeah, yeah. The where, yeah to, to say, oh, spider silk is tougher than Kevlar, you're talking about dragline silk. The other spider silks have a bunch of different properties. Some of them are very adhesive. So there's new adhesives and things that can come out of that. There's dry adhesives, wet adhesives, uh, summer anchors, and uh, used for a whole bunch of different things, scaffolding uh, and whatever, ribbons even. There's all sorts of uh, the, that's the other thing. The more you look into it, the more uh, different spiders are using up a whole bunch of different silks. It's it's just really, really amazing what, what these things are doing. Little creatures that are just sitting. Uh, everyone knows them. Everyone sees them, but they're making materials that nobody can even imagine. Um, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I live yeah. on a farm part of the year, mm -hmm. and you wake up in the morning, and like Charlotte's Web, suddenly there's a huge mm -hmm. uh, spider web across your uh, door. So. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of mm. curse it when it happens you walk out in the morning but uh, <laughs> it is a miraculous uh, architectural yeah. achievement that's for sure who yeah. is your book for who is your reader uh so the 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 book was written because i was giving lectures um on silk uh probably about a, a series of six or, or more lectures that covered different disciplines uh so it was a chance for it was in south america so it was a chance for uh, students in South America to attend a, a, a lecture by an Australian university lecturer and cover all the different disciplines at once, whether they're interested in biology, taxonomy, physics, chemistry, um, uh, design stuff and all sorts of things. So I use silk as the context, but I sort of realized that there's not a good resource that covers it. Yeah, It's all disjointed and things like that. So I, by the time I compiled, compiled all these resources, it really looked like a, this could be a book because you've gone to the effort to to put the resources together, make them make sense, flow into each other for for a teaching series. So it seemed um, it seemed the logical next step is just put put it together and make a book. Um, writing it into a book was then quite involved. That was yeah. another two three more years before the book came out because I did it part time and in my spare time whenever I could. And um, and it's not just a matter of putting resources back to back you have to you have to tell a story so um the book yeah the, the book was inspired by doing research so essentially it's aimed at university students because that was what it uh where the resources uh were compiled for Great. um but i would like to think that um it's quite it's quite a uh, involved if you start reading deeply into it um, so you probably have to be a high-end high school student to, to be able to understand it. But I'd like to think that teachers could use it as a good resource uh, to teach across disciplines on, on a single subject as well. Yeah, and exactly. This covers both biology and, um, you know, uh, I guess technology in a way. Yeah, mm. very, very interesting. And, of course, the alternate title for this could be Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Silk But Didn't Know to, how, Who to Ask. <laughs> now yeah. I've got one more question for you. That's is your one. nickname <laughs> Spider Man or Mothra? <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I uh, perhaps I, answer to both. Yeah, maybe both. I've never really used them, <laughs> but I don't mind. Yeah. Okay, sounds um, great. If we ever make the material, I'm going to get a suit. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly made of spider silk that is indestructible. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, if you get that suit made. You come back on my show and we'll keep you on for an hour. If you're wearing the suit, we'll, it'll definitely have interest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just have to make sure I've got all the functions like the, 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 <laughs> exactly. the silk <laughs> that squirts at you and all that stuff. So um, yeah, it'll take, take a while, but I'll hold you to it. <laughs> Looking forward to it. The name of the book is Silk, Exploring Nature's Super Fiber. It's written by Sean and he has written a great book here about a topic I knew nothing about and entrenched me in a world I knew little about. And it's really, really quite fascinating. It's written for college students and academics, yes, but I think there's broad appeal here as well. Uh, he unravels the intricate world of silk, things you never knew or thought about before. And it is very, very fascinating. Sean, Spider-Man, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Thanks. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.